What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another episode of Action Recap, where we rate action sequences in our favorite movies. I'm your host, Demon Lex, and now that Godzilla King of the Monsters has stomped into theaters, what better way to celebrate the return of cinema's favorite kaiju than by covering arguably Godzilla's worst depiction on the big screen to date, Godzilla 1998. Directed by Roland Emmerich, best known for various disaster films such as Independence Day, The Day After Tomorrow, and 2012. So if you need a director who can direct chaos, that's your guy. Also, the film stars Ferris Bueller himself, Matthew Broderick as Dr. Nick Tatopala, la 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 la, Leon the Professional's Gene Reno as a French Secret Serviceman, and Hank Azaria, best known for doing the various voices on The Simpsons, plays Victor Animal Pilati, a cameraman for a news station. Even though many fans of Godzilla, including Toho, the creators of Godzilla, found this movie to be a bit of a disgrace to the iconic reptilian monster, there's actually a lot of good that came about thanks to this movie's existence. For one, it had a pretty solid toy line that I enjoyed as a kid spawned a great animated series that gave fans the Godzilla they deserved. Then there was the P. Diddy song that was released alongside the film. Gotta admit, it's pretty catchy. And the best moment of all is when Toho bought the rights to the 1998 version of Godzilla, which is now named Zilla by the way, and gets killed off instantly by Toho's Godzilla in Godzilla Final Wars. Honestly, that's probably the most savage thing I've ever seen a company do to someone else's creation. Personally, as a Godzilla film, this adaptation is not so great. But I'd argue if this film was marketed differently as a kaiju movie titled, uh, I don't know, Apex Predator, then I think the film would have garnered more recognition for what it was. With that being said, does Zilla deliver on bringing giant monster fun? Well, let's find out and get to the action. Three, two, one, go! Kicking off the action is a nuclear test in French Polynesia coordinated by the French government, which leads to an iguana nest getting exposed to the radiative fallout and ends up being the catalyst to Zilla's origin. 30 years later, a Japanese carinary ship is attacked by Zilla in the South Pacific, most likely due to its hunger for fish. Or this guy's bowl of noodles. This turned out to be a pretty solid introduction for the monster, with Zilla using its claws to sink the ship, and its tail used to whip the upper deck was an intense sequence to get the audience amped for what was to come next. In the aftermath, only the old man survived the attack. Now in a hospital and traumatized, is questioned by a Frenchman regarding what he had seen. His only response was, Godzilla. But we're gonna call this giant iguana Zilla from here on out, out of respect for the OG King of the Monsters. Days later, as Zilla's on its way vacating to the Big Apple, the mutated iguana decides to go stock up on some more fish by dragging three ships under the waves of the eastern seaboard, leaving every crew member stranded in the middle of the ocean where it's pouring down rain, oh, and it's dark outside. Man, where's Aquaman when you need him? Meanwhile, in New York City by the docks, an old fisherman is about to get the catch of his life a 60 meter tall, 100 meter long, 500 ton mutated iguana to be exact, and the destruction of New York City begins, as Zilla bites into fishing trucks, killing a few workers in the process, <laughs> then takes a casual stroll down the streets of Manhattan, stomping on New Yorkers without a care in the world. Yes, that's how it feels. And thanks to Hank Azaria's plot armor, and Emmerich going for the cheap laugh, his character is able to capture Zilla in its full glory, and live to tell the tale. After New York's first encounter with Zilla, the city is then evacuated so that the military can handle the situation. Nick, Broderick's character, who's a biologist, suggests that it might be easier to draw out Zilla with a trap rather than with force, by luring out the creature with a pile of fish. That's a lot of fish. Bruh. The plan ends up being successful, however, as the military opens fire, it turns out Zilla is more durable and evasive than expected which then leads to Zilla being chased down by a duo of armored vehicles that quickly get taken out by what I assume is Zilla's atomic breath. Smoking. Now Echo Unit, an attack helicopter squadron, is in pursuit of Zilla, but it turns out Echo Unit ends up doing more damage to the city than Zilla itself. Ah, oh, damn. Uh, that is a negative impact. Zilla just ended this pilot's whole career and the rest of Echo Unit for that matter, with Echo 1 getting smacked by Zilla, which then leads to Echo 2 and 4 getting destroyed by Zilla's jaws. That Zilla is one sneaky kaiju. I think I lost him. Surprise. Now we're heading into round 2 with Zilla versus the military, but unfortunately Zilla doesn't fall for the same trick twice, and makes an escape for the water with a very slick dive I might add. Oh. 
I give that dive a 10 out of 10 for great form and execution. However, Zilla isn't in the clear just yet because surprise the Navy's on your ass! Eventually, after Zilla dodges several torpedoes, it gets cornered by the Navy due to swimming into the edge of New York's mainland, which then gives the Navy the opportunity to blow Zilla to smithereens, and the threat of Zilla is no more. Even though the giant monster threat has been dealt with, there's still Zilla's nest that must be destroyed to prevent any future kaiju destruction. And if you were wondering how Zilla is able to reproduce since it doesn't have a mate, Zilla is actually asexual. Our protagonists find a nest of over 200 eggs laid within Madison Square Garden, but just before they can put an end to the Zilla infestation, the eggs begin to hatch, and thus begins the ripoff of Jurassic Park's Velociraptors. Of course, like all newborns, they get a bit hungry, so they stack on a few soldiers in the process. <laughs> However, throughout the Zilla baby sequence, the plot armor takes full effect with moments where characters should have been easily killed off, but for whatever reason, the Zill babies barely do anything. Maybe it's because they're newborns trying to figure out what's food and what's not food. I mean, there's even a moment where they're eating popcorn for crying out loud. Anyways, after our four main protagonists send out a live news report through the stadium's broadcast booth, the military is made aware of the broadcast and responds with an incoming airstrike. As the four reach the exit of the stadium to get clear of the upcoming attack, a swarm of Zilla babies are in their way, with more sliding in from behind like it's a cartoon. And when all hope seems lost, our French secret serviceman shoots the chandeliers to clear a path. With the four barely escaping the bombing, and all the Zilla babies blown to Kingdom Come. And with that, we have our action recap. Holy sh! Zilla's still alive! <laughs> After emerging from the rubble of Madison Square Garden, Zilla notices its dead offspring. And like any heartbroken parent would be seeing their children dead on arrival, Zilla takes its anger out on the people responsible. Thus, the final chase begins. Zilla angrily hunts down the group through the streets of Manhattan. And after several close calls, which include being nearly eaten in an alleyway, as well as a couple of smooth fakeouts in a cab, especially when they have Zilla falling on its ass, and using the high beams to get out of the tunnel. The group's cab then gets stuck in Zilla's mouth, but is able to escape thanks to Nick shoving an electric cable in Zilla's gums which then escalates with the group luring Zilla out to the open by driving through the Brooklyn Bridge. And thanks to the suspension cables, the bridge becomes the perfect trap for the monster. Now tangled up on the edge of the bridge, Zilla is hit with multiple missiles from the fighter jets, <laughs> then falls to the ground, succumbing to its fatal wounds, And our last moments with the creature is when Nick watches Zilla's eyes go dark to signify the creature's death. But is this truly the end of Zilla? Go watch the animated series, it's amazing! Overall, I give the action in Godzilla 1998 three dancing Godzillas out of five. There are a lot of fun moments to be had with the action in this movie. Granted, there are a lot of cheesy scenes sprinkled here and there. Also, the CGI doesn't hold up as well as it used to, and as a Godzilla movie, it doesn't compare well to its peers. Honestly, if this movie was titled something else entirely, I think this film would have got a better response from both critics and audiences. The Epic Showdown Award for Best Action Scene goes to Zilla vs. the Submarines. It's not often you see a Godzilla battle taking place underwater, and for that it gets points for creativity in my book. The Highlight Reel Award for Best Action Moment goes to the death of Zilla. Even though this version of Godzilla is considered an abomination to some, you can't help but feel a little bit bad for the creature that was trying to live its life and avenge its falling offspring. The Balboa Award for Best Fighter goes to Zilla itself. This creature had it all. An epic intro, badass action moments, and a tragic death. A creature that was driven to fight till the very end. The Ballistic Award for Worst Action Moment goes to the Godzilla baby sequence. Honestly, I found most of it to be silly, unnecessary, and the execution of it all could have been a lot better. And there you guys have it, that's my action recap of Godzilla 1998. Let me know what you thought about this film in the comment section down below, and what films do you recommend that I do next? If you enjoyed this episode, make sure to hit the like button, it really helps me out, subscribe for more content from me on the action recap. I'm Dimalex, I'll see you in the future. <laughs>